Second level is that you shouldn't hurt your brother. You shouldn't hurt, you shouldn't harm your brother. You shouldn't hurt and you should not harm your brother in any shape, form, or fashion. The Prophet mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in describing the believer, the brother, he said, al-Muslim, man salim al-Muslimoon min lisanihi wa yadihi. The real Muslim is the one who the Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hand. He doesn't lie, doesn't spread rumors, doesn't say he's a kafir, doesn't say he's a mubtadi, doesn't say he's a thief, doesn't. The Muslims are saved from what he has to say. She doesn't say she thinks she's cute, he's ugly, she's stingy, don't do that. You can't hurt and harm the Muslims with anything. Harming the Muslim, harming the Muslim is parking your car the wrong way. Harming the Muslim is a lot. It's a lot. Marrying his daughter and not taking care of his daughter. And you stress her out. She gets stressed out. She has a um, miscarriage because she's stressed out because with her husband. And the father and the mother, they suffer from that. That hurts them. So the Quran is replete with ayat and the ahadith. I know I can't go through all of that. But I just give you one example about this masjid or a masjid in Islam. Allah mentioned the masjid in the Quran and he said about that masjid, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا دِرَارًا لَا يَدُرُّ مُسْلَمْ أَخَاهُ مُسْلَمْ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا دِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ There were a group of people in Medina, they were hypocrites. They said they believe, but in reality they had kufr. Allah described the hypocrites. He said, they are those people who built a masjid. Rasulullah's masjid was there. They built another masjid. And from that new masjid that the hypocrites had, they used to harm the Muslims. They used to spread kufr. They used to wage war against Allah and his messenger. Use that masjid as an outpost. That masjid is called Masjid al dirar the masjid of hurt. The masjid was built to harm the community. So it's a masjid that's haram. Uh, the masjid is the place where you go to pray, you get close to Allah. But in this place, so in this case, in this case, it was a negative thing because it was built in order to hurt the Muslim. So anything and everything that hurts a Muslim, you compromise the brotherhood. That's the second level. Now on the third level and the highest level. The third level and the highest level about this brotherhood is a word, I'm gonna give it to you in Arabic, I want you to write it down and I want you to memorize it, you people. It's called Al-Ithar, Al-Ithar. I'm gonna say it and you repeat it. I'm gonna ask you this at the end of this class. I'm gonna say, sister, you over there, what's that word? Holy, holy. <laughs> good job, good job, Farid. I'm going to say it and you say it. Al-Ithar. Remember, got to look at the word. Al-Ithar. Al-Ithar. Al-Ithar in Arabic, you should add that to your vocabulary, man. Al-Ithar means something is your haq, it's your haq. But your brother, you give him preference over yourself. It's yours. It's your water. But you give it to him. And you prefer him to yourself. That's the seat. You're, you're sitting in that seat. See, Sheikh Musa starts walking from around here. He's an older brother. You get up. It's your seat. You've been sitting there for 30 minutes. Sheikh Musa, the Mu'adzin, starts walking. You get up and say, have this seat. That's the highest level of manifesting the darajat of brotherhood. To give him preference over yourself. Listen to what Allah Ta'ala said about the muhajireen and the ansar, who were brothers. The muhajireen are the companions who accepted Islam in Mecca at first. And then they made hijra and left their homes, their money, everything for Allah. And they went to Medina. When they came to the Medina, 
They found the Ansar, those who accepted Al-Islam after the Muhajireen. The Muhajireen of Mecca, the Muhajireen of Mecca, they are better than the Ansar in the scales of Islam. They're better. They are better. But the Ansar, they prove their worth. Listen to the ayat. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, don't let this ayah just go over your head, man. Listen to this ayah. It's one of those ayahs to show the virtues of the companions. Allah said, and those people who were from the Medina, the Ansar, Tabawu Udar, they, they, they were in Medina first. Those who come from Mecca and they make hijra to them, the, the Ansar don't have anything negative in their hearts against them. The fact that they came to Medina and they accepted Islam, their people fought against the Nabi, and the Ansar never fought against them. Rasulullah chose, chose the Muhajirin, they better. Allah said they don't have anything in their hearts against those Muslims. He said, although from what Allah has given them, and then Allah said, and they choose them over themselves. The Ansar, al ithar what ithar? Many examples, first example at the top of the list, and really this example is enough, but there are many. What happened? There was a man by the name of Abdurrahman ibn Auf. He's one of the 10 people promised Jannah. He had money. And when you hear about Abu Bakr and Uthman, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, when you hear that these people had money, it's not they had money with a little property. They had Bill Gates money. They had money. And half of the or six of the 10 promised Jannah were people who had money. Allah doesn't want us to be bums and poor. Well, that turns sign, nasiba come in dunya. Those younger brothers who came in, I'm gonna encourage you, encourage our youngsters, go to school, man, and get a degree, and don't be a bum. We don't want you in a masjid, in a corner, talking about who will, who will, who will, who will, or praying all day. You gotta get a job to help yourself and your family first, and to help the community. Rasulullah paid emphasis on a lot of people. He paid emphasis, them 10 people, six of them had money. Anyway, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, he was rich in Mecca. He came from Mecca, he came to Medina with nothing, nothing. Rasulullah said, you Abdurrahman ibn Auf, you're gonna live with this man from Medina, from the Ansar, Sa'd ibn Zayd. And they were brothers. Sa'd ibn Uzayd said to Abdurrahman ibn Auf, I have two wives. You choose which one you want to choose and you can marry her. I have this much money. I have a hundred pounds, thousand dollars. You take half and I take half. That doesn't exist now. I have about saved up in my account about 350 pounds, something like that. If I had to give one of you half of that, that's a tall order. Because I got a lot of bills to pay. Got a lot of kids. I got a lot of stuff to take care of. But those companions wasn't like that. That's ethar. I can't imagine, I can't imagine a man saying, I got two wives. You choose which one you want, I'll divorce her. I can see one of us saying, I got two wives. This one is a problem. I'm gonna give her to you, and I'm gonna take that one. That's what we do today. He said, "You choose." But do you know what Abdurrahman ibn Auf said? You know what he said? He said, "May Allah bless you and your family and your money. Just guide me to the marketplace. I know how to hustle. I know how to grind and make money. I ain't no bum. I know no welfare. Now it's permissible in this land." 
Prophet Muhammad said the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The upper hand that's given. That's when the upper hand is a Muslim hand and the lower hand is a Muslim hand. The ones given, it's going to get more reward than the one taken. What if that upper hand is the hand of a Kafir and the lower hand is the hand of a Muslim? That's how, what we have in the UK. It's a welfare state. We take money, the Muslims take money from the Kofar and they lie. Every time the girl have a baby, she goes to get more money. They say, where the father? She says, I don't know. And the father is with her in the house. Just to make money, that's how we are. So the point is, we don't want to be bums. Don't be a person who takes money from people. That man said, nah, man, may Allah bless you and your family and your money. Just show me where the marketplace is. I go and get mines, be isn't he lot. So the one who is self-sufficient, he understood, is better than the one who's asking, begging, being supported by other people. So those are the three darajat of brotherhood. The lowest one, the lowest one. Love for your brother with your love for yourself. If we practice that hadith, most of the problems we have in the community will be over. Marriage, most of the problems will be over. We got double standards. Woe unto the mutaffifin. The mutaffif is that cat. You go to him and you say, give me a kilo of um, tomatoes. The mutaffif, he'll short you and cheat you and jip you. Give you three, four tomatoes less. But when he goes to get tomatoes, he wants all of his thing. Man, well, give it to everybody else. Why you got double standards? I want my wife to respect me. I want my wife to be loyal to me. I want my wife not to be talking to nobody behind my back. Well, well I got to do the same thing. Why the double standard? Lowest level. Love for the Muslim brother, sister, would you love for yourself? Second level, second level, don't hurt the person. Don't hurt people. How y'all hurt the person? Your lisan, your hand, what you say. The, what do you call that? The irr, the irr. The honor of a Muslim is sacred. His money is sacred. You can't just say anything about people. You people here, you people here, I don't know most of you who came today. Somebody come to me and just start talking about you and I, I, he just start talking about you. She just start talking about you because they don't like you and they start telling me that. And your honor is sacred. Well, what are you doing? If there's no religious reason of doing that, why are you telling me that? Today, you have no honor. Somebody don't like you, they don't know why they don't like you, they'll say anything about you. And it's big stuff. They'll call you a kafir, call you an innovator, call you a whatever, murderer, thief, anything. So those are the three. Can we move on to the next one? The darajat. Lowest one, love for your brother, you love for yourself. Next one, don't hurt him. Top one, al ithar al ithar What is ithar? Giving preference. It's your haq to be in the first row in the chair in there, whatever. And you let the other person have that. Now we're gonna go to what I really believe is the more important one but I wanted to, to use that first one so you remember it from the khutbah. Now listen, the brotherhood of Al-Islam has arkan, like the arkan of Al-Islam. Arkan, it is the part of a building that's the strongest part, the foundation, like our religion. The arkan of Islam are five, and this should be second nature to us. Ask the Muslim, what are the five arkan of Islam? He'll say Hajj, Som, Zakat, and I forgot the other two. Yeah, you were right, but we don't say it like that. You say it in, in line, in accordance to how it comes. Second nature. What are the five arkan of Islam? The Shahadatain, the Salat, the Zakat, the Som and Hajj, because that's the importance that they come in. The f you see this chair? This chair has legs on it. You take one of these chairs out, this thing is gonna be compromised. Your religion is the same way. Umar said about Hajj. How many of you perform Hajj? Put your hand up. 
All right, it's hard making Hajj from Jamaica. I'll ask about that. And Shaitan doesn't want you to make Hajj. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey of a lifetime. Umar said, anyone who has the ability to make Hajj and he doesn't, let him die as a Jew or Christian. Let him die, you have the ability. Zakat, all of it is like that. The arkan of al iman, six articles of faith. What are the six articles? Uh, Yom al qiyamah, believe in that, uh, believe in the qadr, um, believe in the prophets, the other ones I don't know. You have to know it like you know your kids. Prophet Muhammad said about, Allah said about the Yahud, they knew Prophet Muhammad was coming. They knew because the, they were prophesied that. Allah said, Ya'rifunuhu kama ya'rifuna abna'uhu. They know him like they know their sons. I know my sons. Somebody come and say, your boy did this and that. I say, anything is possible, but I don't think my son did that. If something happened and a number of them were around, I say, Shaba, you did it. Because I know what this one do it. And we know our kids. You got to know these arcan like that. What are they? Six pillars of Iman. Believing in Allah. Believing in the Malaika. Believing in the books. Believing in the prophets and the messages. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhim. Believing in Yom al Qiyamah. And believing in the Qadr, the good of and the bad. Point is, those are the arcan. The arcan of brotherhood. How many of you are married? How many of you are married? How many of you are not married? Some of you didn't even put your hands up at all. What, what you went to? What you went to? One more time. How many of you are married? How many of you are not married? All right, now check it out. Marriages, they have arcan. Your marriage. They have pillars as well, like communication. You don't want to be married to someone you don't communicate well with. You're in trouble. Loyalty, compatibility, respect, love, attraction. Those are from the arcana of marriage. If you don't, if you don't, it's like you miss the arcana of salat, man, you're in trouble. That's why my man Abdullah is about to get married, inshallah. I hope Abdullah done tied his camel. Because you don't want to marry somebody, the Arkan. And I, that's why those Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood movies are your enemy that show this picture of fake marriage. It's a fake, fake. It's fake. It ain't even real. It ain't even real. I was, was, well, I was taking a bus in the UK. It's a cheap bus and it's nice. You only have to pay five pounds to go from Birmingham to London, I took the bus. And they had the movies up there. They put the Bollywood movies up there. They put the Bollywood movie on there, and the, um, you know, the hero, the dude, the hero. He has some muscles and stuff like that. His, you know, the lady he loved, she was in the building, had all these floors. This dude pulled up on a motorcycle, got off the motorcycle, ran upstairs, on each level, there was these dudes coming at him, fighting him. He was beating everybody up. Go to the next floor, next to the floor, next floor. He was it. And then when he got to the top floor where the girl was, they threw her out the window. He started running down the stairs and was fighting people coming down the stairs, came down, caught her, put on a motorcycle, and went away. Who does that? You guys are laughing, but it's... People who know these Bollywood movies know it's extra, man. And then the young sister, she's growing up, and that's what she's looking for. And it ain't real. That's not real. And the brother's looking for a sister like that. It ain't real. It's not even real. So now, the brotherhood. There are three pillars for the brotherhood. Three out of kind. The first one is a toba. Write that down. The second, the brotherhood is predicated upon toba. Number two, a salat. Number three, a zakat. These are the three arcana of brotherhood. 
what the brotherhood is predicated upon. Listen to these two ayat. I'm going to bring to your attention. Both of them in Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah has another name called Al-Bara. It is the only surah in the Quran from the 114 that don't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Akhi, if someone were to say to you, my man, what is the only surah of the Quran that doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? It's Surah At-Tawbah. The other name is Surah Al-Bara'a, which means to be free. <coughs> it's one of the last surahs that was revealed. And this surah is the surah that told Prophet Muhammad, no more turning the cheek. None of that. Before they used to turn the other cheek, they used to let him slide. But when this surah was revealed, the different kettle of fish. First ayah in Surah At-Tawbah. Allah said, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَإِخْوَانَكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ So Allah Azzawajal said in this surah, Ya Muhammad, if they make tawbah and if they perform salat, and if they give zakat, then they are your brothers in the deen. Let's talk about the kuffar Quraysh. Prophet Muhammad was fighting him and then he left and he went to Medina. Now in Medina is jihad. No one would turn the other cheek. They were still fighting. Urhud, Badr. This ayah was one of the last surahs revealed. Ya Muhammad, if these people of Mecca, if they make tuba, they make salat, they give zakat, then they're your brothers in the deed. So that's the delil. There's another ayat. I need you to write this down. It's called ayat to safe, the ayat of the sword. It is an ayat of the Quran that abrogated more ayat than any other ayat. Ayat to safe. Allah said in this ayat, فَإِذَا سَلَخَ الْأَشْهُرُ الْحُرُمْ فَقْتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتَمُوهُمْ فَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْصُرُوهُمْ وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْسَدْ فَإِنْ تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَوْ زَكَاءِ فَخَلُوا سَبِيلِي This is it is. Ya Muhammad, Wherever you find these mushrikeen, faqtulum, kill them wherever you find them. What's the meaning of that? If you find them in Mecca, where you shouldn't fight, do that. If it's in a sacred month, do that. He said, if you find them, kill them wherever they are, because they're fighting against you. Not you just go to a non-Muslim, kill them. Daesh, ISIS, we're not on that stuff. Talking about enemy combatants, cats who are fighting against them. He said, kill them, fahsuruhum, make an embargo around them. Don't let anything in or anything out. Waqrudu lahum kulla marsad. And, and, lie in wait to ambush them. But if they make tawbah, and it gives, makes a lot, and it gives a cat, then leave them alone. Two ayats. Listen, guys, I'm telling you, man. This surah is a tremendous surah. The surah begins, it's called Surah Al-Bara'ah because Allah started and He said, وَأَذَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ This ayah, the surah was revealed, it said, this is a proclamation, an adhan, an announcement to the mushrikeen on the day of Al-Hajj Al-Akbar. Allah and his messenger are free from the mushrikeen. So it's called Surah Al-Bara'a. So the ayah establishes this. Now I got to explain it real quick. What is the meaning of tawbah? What is the meaning of salat and zakat? This is important, guys. If they make tawbah, means two things. It means number one. Number one. If a non-Muslim, white, black, purple, green woman your, your ex-wife, your ex-husband, whoever, 
someone who killed your mother, your father, whoever they are, Jew, a Jew, a Jew, a white boy, whoever, he's a Kafir. He becomes a Muslim, that's Tawbah. If he make Tawbah from Kufr to Islam, you gotta accept him. Now, coming from America, I grew up and we have a lot of racism, man, a lot of racism. So some of us, where I grew up, we didn't go to where the white boys, well, they didn't come to where, where you get caught over there, you in trouble. And if they get caught, they in trouble. That's what we grew up on. It was terrible, it's still like that. So now, the white boy become a Muslim. And I'm in the masjid and he become a Muslim. I gotta put all that nonsense behind me. And I gotta look at him as my brother. The Yehud, the Yehud. We look at the Yehud a particular way because of what's mentioned about them in the Quran, what they're doing in Palestine. The white dude comes to the masjid, Yehudi, and he accepts Islam. We got to accept him. But you know what I found with us in America, especially, and in the UK? The white boy could be a Jew. He was a Jew. He accepted Islam. We don't trust him. He's with the CIA. This dude is with MI5. Don't trust the white boy. You can't do that to people. He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. If you can imagine here, like in America, the Bloods and the Crips, they hate each other. They hate each other. You know, Black Lives Matter to some people, not to them ignorant people. No life matter to them people. I want to use the N-word to describe them. They're enemies to black people, I'm telling you. Some of them, you should throw them under the prison. They have a really, really strong hatred for each other. It happens all the time. Two of them would become Muslims in prison and out of prison. They got to put all of that drama behind them because they are Muslims. One tribe fought another tribe. One tribe got beef with another tribe in Africa, in the Arab world. This was it. So the first meaning of that is if somebody becomes a Muslim and makes Toba, he's your brother. She's your brother. The second meaning of it is they're already Muslims. They're already Muslims, but they oppress you. They oppress you. They stole your money. You went into business with them. They stole your money and you find it hard to forgive them. Allah said, if they make Toba, make Salah and Zakat, they're your brothers. The dude made Toba, man. He made restorations. He apologized to you. He came and I said, look, I was, yeah, I was on drugs, whatever, whatever. I was in the He made Toba. You can't keep holding that grudge against him. Should you loan him money again? I ain't telling you that. But you can't keep holding that against him because he made Toba. The prophet said, The one who made toba is like the one who doesn't have any sin. So the husband and the wife, he says something, she can't get it out of her head. She did something, he can't get it out of her head, and they won't forgive each other. They'll always, even the love will be compromised, the respect, the obedience, the desire of him protecting her. Yo, man, they make toba. It's your brother, give it the program. That's the meaning of Torah. Second one, Salat. This one is crucial, guys. A Salat. <sighs> right here in this audience, I don't know most of you, but you know I told you I have 350 pounds saved up. I can't give you half, it'd be hard for me. I would bet that 350 pounds, if I was a better man, that there are people here who don't pray five times a day. Not because they're bad people, it's just because we're negligent. We don't pray for you. Not only that, not only that, listen, you take this finger right here, you put it on a Muslim map, Arab world, Africa, pick it up, it'll be dripping blood. One of the reasons why, Palestine and Iraq, Kashmir, uh, Syria, dripping blood. Why? One of the main reasons our Ummah doesn't pray. Everybody here knows somebody who doesn't pray. Everybody. Everybody here. 
everybody. Some of our children, 16, 17, 18, we don't even bother waking them up because we don't want them trouble. You just leave them. The wife prays, the husband doesn't pray. The husband prays, the wife doesn't pray. My cousin doesn't pray. My mother doesn't pray. My auntie doesn't pray. Everybody. Listen to what the prophet said about Salat, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why we say this is a rukun for the brotherhood. Prophet Muhammad said, Al-Ahdu ladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat min tarakaha faqad kafir. The difference between us and them. Sikhs, agnostics, Hindus, Yehud, atheists, all of them. Difference between us and them is the prayer. Whoever doesn't pray is a kafir. How can he be my brother? Listen to this hadith. What are we talking about? We're talking about the arcana of brotherhood, which are three. The first one is toba. Toba means two things. Once he becomes a Muslim, he's your brother. He's already a Muslim, he made a mistake, he made toba, he's your brother. Second thing is salah. Listen to this. Prophet Muhammad told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man istaqbala qiblatana wa salla salatana wa akala dhabihatana fa dhaak al-muslim lahu man al-muslimin wa alayhi ma alayhi. Anyone who faces our qibla and prays the prayer that we pray and he eats the food that we make, halal bismillah, then that is a Muslim. He has rights upon them and they have rights upon him. On the strength of him facing that kibble and praying this prayer. So when you know of a Muslim who is struggling or he needs whatever, whatever, he's not perfect, whatever, we gotta be there to try to support him or her. He may be a crackhead, but he's trying. We can't discard him, throw him in a, in a, in a, in a suah. So salat. If people are not praying, they're compromising the brotherhood of Al Islam. You ain't no real Muslim. I don't say you're a non Muslim, but you ain't no real Muslim. Louis Farrakhan and the nation, kuffar. Because they don't pray. In addition to the other stuff that they say, Ahmadiyya, they don't pray. They pray when they want to pray. Kuffar. And I'm not a person who runs around wholesale like a little kid saying, kuffar, kuffar. This stuff is serious. So I want to say to all of you before moving on, get your salat together. You get your salat together. And if you are praying, if you are praying, got to get your wife on the program. Wife got to get her husband. We all got to get our kids. Our kids go to school and they don't pray. 16, 17, 14, 15, 16. That's the Islamic identity. That's the Islamic identity. Number three, zakat. Why did we say these three are the arkan? Why did we say that? Because of those ayat in Surah the Tawbah. If they make Tawbah, they make Salah, give zakat, leave them. If they make Tawbah, they give zakat, make Salah, give zakat, they're your brothers. Zakat. Listen, listen carefully. A lot could be said about zakat, but I just draw your attention to one thing. One thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. And when he died, who did the companions choose to be the leader? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Before Rasulullah died, there were a number of Bedouin Arabs who said, we believe in everything. We believe in Allah, the Malaika, the books, the prophets, Yom al-Qiyamah, the Qadr. We believe in the Arkan of Islam, all of that. But we're not giving any more zakat. They believed in zakat. They said, we're not giving the zakat to Abu Bakr. We're not giving you no money, that's it. Rasulullah died. Abu Bakr cool, calmed things down, and then he gathered up an army and said, we're gonna go get them. We're going to get them. They were Muslims. Umar, Uthman, everybody from the community was saying, how are you gonna fight people? They say, la ilaha illallah, we can't go fight them out yet. Abu Bakr was all by himself. He said, listen, if these people 
used to give Rasulullah a zakat, and then they don't want to give it to me, even the thing that you tie the camel's leg so they don't move. Even if they held that back, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. The community said, how, how? They're Muslims. Abu Bakr bought the delil. He didn't just stay there arguing. He said, I heard the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in an authentic hadith. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, he does the salah and he gives a zakat, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَتْ عَلَيَّ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَالْدِمَاءُهُمْ إِلِّي بِحَقِّ الْإِسْلَامِ Anyone who says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, makes a lot and gives zakat. He didn't say Hajj in Ramadan. Anybody, Rasulullah said, who says these three things, his wealth, is haram, his blood is haram, you can't harm him, you can't take his wealth. And then the people realize, they're not giving zakat. And Rasulullah said, if they give zakat, then they are safe. And they all submit it, all of them. So don't be afraid to be the only one who's saying something, if you know what you're talking about. So what, everybody else is against you, if you know what you're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, be quiet. But if you know it, someone comes to us and says, again, this cat over there, this cat over there accepted Islam yesterday, right over there by that house over there, come over here talking about I'm the Mahdi. And then he does some miracle, some, some, he does something, points up to this, and this thing goes up and it stands up. The people sitting here will say, whoa, he must be the Mahdi, that's true. You're gonna say, man, that man ain't no Mahdi. He can't be the Mahdi. And then you start giving the little why he can't be the Mahdi. People don't believe you. So what they don't believe you? Because you know what you're talking about. Why can't he be the Mahdi? Because he's a revert. Why can't he be the Mahdi? Because the Mahdi comes from the lineage of Fatima. Why can't he be the Mahdi? Because his mother and father would have called him Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You know these things. It's like a Dajjal. When the Dajjal comes, most of the people are gonna follow him. You're gonna say, I'm your Lord. Most of the people are going to say, yeah, because you're going to do tricks. But the Muslim who knows his religion, you're going to say, nah, 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 I don't care what they say. You got calf on your head. You got one eye. <laughs> He's going to have stuff. What the people say and do doesn't trick him. So don't let your religion be a religion where Allah said, women and nasi may ya'bu the law, the haruf. There are those people they worship Allah, they don't know what they're doing. So those are the three arkan of a toba. We're gonna to go to the last one. But before the last one, I wanna ask some questions, inshallah. Real quick. My man, because you look really enthused, Abdul Jalil. I thought you was back there cooking, man. <laughs> Abdul Jalil, don't look at the paper, don't cheat. Abdul Jalil. The three arcan of the brotherhood. What are they? Stop looking at your book, man. What are they, Abdul Jalil? Uh, uh, Good job. Salah. Good job. Zaka. Good job, Abdul Jalil. My man Abdullah, Habibi. Abdullah, what are the three darajat, starting from the lowest to the most important, the three? Good job. The next one? Huh? You shouldn't harm him. Is the brother supposed to be safe from your tongue and your hands? So the second one harm him, and the highest one is what? Preference. Preference. Sheikh Musa, preference in Arabic. How do you say preference in Arabic, that new vocabulary word? Behind the Sheikh Musa, you. Uh, preference? Yeah, but in Arabic, man. My brother right there. What's your name, my man? I didn't get to get your name yet. What's your name, no, behind me? Oh, I thought you was Zaro. Yeah, I am. And that's your name too? Oh, oh. 
<laughs> I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm tired. Plus, you got your hand in your mouth, man. You got to take your hand and be, be a man, man. Right, right, right. Speak your peace, baby. Let the people know you live in, man. Al Esau. Good job, brother. Al Esau. Al Esau. Now, the last one the hukuk of the Muslim. Hukuk from the word haq, your rights. The Muslim doesn't have one haq. He has hukuk wa kathiru mahiya. And they are many, many, many. But this hadith, six. Rasulullah says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, haqqul muslim ala al muslim sit. The Muslim has six rights over his brother. And the reason why he says six rights, because these are some of the most important, doesn't mean that's all. He has the right, love for your brothers, you love for yourself. That's a right of yours. He has the right, Prophet Muhammad said, help your brother if he's oppressing or if he's the oppressed. They say, Ya Rasulullah, we understand if he's being oppressed, but how are we going to help him if he's oppressing? He says, stop him from oppressing. He's beating up his wife. He's not taking care of the situation. And you know it. Get involved and say, what are you doing? Stop him. He's going, he's going overboard. It's your, it's your job to stop him. We can't just sit. You got to give him advice. That's, you know, we got to help him. So the haq, the haq, hukuk, are many, many. But these are six of the most important because you got to deal with them on a daily basis. First, when he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha laqeetahu fa sallam alayhi. If and when you meet him, give him salams. You know one thing I can't stand about my kids, may Allah bless them and guide my kids and your kids, is that as they grow up, they have a lot of ghafla. They're not always paying attention. So they will come into the house and sometimes not say assalamu alaikum or before they eat, they won't say bismillah. Something you gotta just keep on them about it. You gotta keep telling them. You gotta keep telling them, keep telling them. But you would think, man, it's easy. Just say bismillah before you eat. And every time you come in, say assalamu alaikum to your family. So here, 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 in this place, I told you, we're gathered here with Muslims. You come in, you say assalamu alaikum to the Muslims when you meet them. That's his haq. Bakhil, bakhil is a person who's cheap. You can't even say salams. The salams, if the imam gave a khutbah for a month on the salams, he would have done the issue justice, done us justice. If you meet him, say salams. But don't just say salams. Prophet Muhammad used to say to the munafiqun, Woe unto those people who believed with their tongues, but you don't believe with your heart. Stop hurting and harming the Muslims. Munafiqeen were hurting them and harming them with their kalam. Aisha in the Qissat al-If, the great slander, the Munafiqeen said she was having a relationship with another Muslim. Rasulullah's wife almost led to civil war between the Muhajirin and the Ansar. How would one of you feel, just as an example, somebody came and said, your wife, your daughter did that. Was with another man, is like, just like that, just cut out. They believe, they said, we believe. And that's the problem with the munafiqeen. Yaquluna bi al sinatihim ma laysa fi qulubihim. They say with their tongues, What's not in their heart? And their heart is kufr. So first right, when you meet them, you say assalamu alaikum. You don't look at them and mean mug them, give them the stinky eye. It's what the people do today. They look at you like you're crazy because you're not from their masjid, you're not from their jama'ah. You're supposed to go with the Muslim. Assalamu alaikum means peace unto you. Well, I'm not gonna hurt you, I'm not gonna harm you. And you say back to them, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. And that's why I think, you know, in these little small messages like this, someone may look at this message and say, oh, it's a small message. 
I think the best messages are the small messages because they're easier to manage and they're easier to be Muslims in. They're easier to, to, to be together if the people understand the religion. The Imam, his example, he's a fitna. The Imam is planting seeds between people's hearts to keep contention and problems. The admin, you don't want good for us, man. We're trying to elevate in our religion. Give salams. Number two, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that da'aka fajibu. If your brother invites you, you gotta go. It's fardu ain, it's wajib upon you. Unless there's a reason, you get sick, you can't go, you have to work, you can't go. Something is going on at the da'wah you don't like. Fatima and Ali invited a man to come to their house for dinner. The man came. Fatima said to Ali, oh, we should invite, we should invite Rasulullah, my father, we should invite him. Oh, we should. Ali invited Rasulullah, came. When they opened the door, Rasulullah didn't go in. They opened the door, he looked, and he turned around and he walked away. Fatima said, well, go, go, go find out what happened. That's how the companions were. They weren't the people if, if something comes to them, they want to know what happened, what's that? The way we are, we don't give a damn, we don't care. I won't ask any questions. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Why did the Imam do this? We don't care. Ali went, Ya Rasulullah, you came, you didn't come, what happened? Rasulullah said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nuhu Raysa Li, Walali Ayy Nabiyin, and yet Bayt al Muzawwaka, it's not permissible for me or any other prophet to go into a house that is decorated in opulence, it's overboard. It's over, overboard. You know, like these people, um, these rappers make the toilet bowl, a kama kama out of gold, a toilet bowl out of gold. And we watch those flicks. Uh, my crib, uh, cribs and stuff like that. We watch that and that, wish I had a like that. That crib, you in trouble because it's too much. Prophet Muhammad said that the dunya is a, is a, is a sijin, a prison for the mu'min, and it's a jannah for the kaf, kaf, do whatever you want in his dunya. Now don't get it twisted, don't misunderstand. Allah loves to see us in good, nice stuff. In Allah jameel, or yuhibbu jamal. Allah is beautiful, he loves beauty. What he doesn't love is when you go overboard. You can afford this car right here. You can afford that by Allah's permission. But instead of staying within your realm, you go get another car bigger so you can make a statement and it's beyond your means. That's the point. So he didn't go into that house. He didn't go into the house. So if you get invited and something's going on, they're eating monkey meat, they're smoking weed, there's a wedding, there's a wedding, Muslim wedding, and the girl is wearing a wedding gown, gown is real long, her arms are showing, and they're singing, here comes the bride, all dressed in white, and they be throwing rice on her. That, that's how Christians get married. We don't, we don't get married like that. I wanna ask you guys a question with these mobile phones. You know, if I were to ask you, I'm about to take an exam, uh, my man Abdullah's gonna get married soon. We gotta make Abdullah, we gotta make dua for him. And I sing you hands like this to make dua. Is this the way we make dua? Is this the way Muslims make dua? Who make dua like this? Christians, Christians people in the Orient, you know, the Chinese. How do we make dua, us? We make dua like that. We make dua like that, like that, like that, like that. So from today forward, don't send that thing. That ain't your religion. Make dua for me. And even just as bad as to send the emoji with white hands. You better put some melanin in them, in them hands, man. I'm trying to tell you something, man. So hear me out. If he invites you, go. Lunch, tea, uh, marriage, walima, aqiqa. He invited you, go. Wajim. Number three, 
If he asks you for advice, give him good advice. He asks you something, you have to give him good advice. Yo, my wife, she's acting up, you know, and I don't think I could take it anymore, man. I just really need you. What, what you think? You know, if you, no, come on, brother. That lady put a lot of work in there with you. You know what I'm saying? And it's that time of the month. Plus, she had these kids and this and that. And, man, you know, you're not an easy character to get along with. So come on, brother. Don't be like that. Love for your sister what you love for yourself. The prophet said to the men, La yufriku mu'mina. It is not acceptable for a believing man to hate his wife. If he sees something in her that he hates, let him look for something that he likes. And she has to do the same thing. Love for your brother, but you love for yourself. Well, she put on some weight now, ain't really feeling like, well, you ain't as strong as you used to be neither. Well, she ain't the best cook in the world, but she is a dedicated, loyal mother. Well, your husband, he may not have the best job in the world, but you know he got your back. You got to look at the glass as being half empty. Simple as that. So if he asks you for advice, give him good advice. Before moving to the next one, I would really tell you guys, man, to be careful about who you take as your friend. Everybody who you think is your homeboy, homegirl is not that. There is fit, fit and having a free and friend in Islam. There's fit like in brotherhood. There's a way about going, getting a friend. It's not just me and him hung out like that. And I like him, that that's not the friend. But we'll deal with that hopefully at another time. Number four, إِذَا حَمِدَ اللَّهِ إِذَا عَتَصَ ثُمَّ شَمَّتَ if your brother sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, you should make tashmeet. You should say what? Ya Hamakullah. That is a dua, man, that we all have to learn how to say. Simple. It's a reincurring thing. It's from the six hukuk. You've been a Muslim four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve years. And you didn't get your hamakullah yet. I ain't putting you down, but it's about priorities, man. The 11 wives of the Muslim, of the Prophet, your mothers, five are kind of Islam, six are kind of, we still don't know that. It's a problem. Prioritize. When I used to live in Orlando, Florida, you know you can c carry a concealed weapon in Orlando, Florida. So our community, we were strapped. Even the sisters were strapped. As long as you're not a felon, we were strapped in that mischief. Some of those brothers were so prolific with arms, you can turn the light off and them dudes can break that thing down without any light. Some of us are like that in the dunya. He could take an engine out of a car and fix it by himself. Computer, fix it. He know his job. But when it comes to the dean, he doesn't know very much. In the dunya, in the dunya, the secular world, dude is competent. She's a good cook. In America, we say she cooks so good she put a foot in it because it tastes that good. But when it comes to the dean, she doesn't know what hijab is. She doesn't know how to read fat guy. She doesn't know. And I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying, come on, man. We got to get our priorities right. You don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to give the khutbah. You don't have to memorize the Quran. But know enough where you just know how to navigate, man. You're not confused. Everybody come with a new screen. You going to follow them? Now, I ain't following you, man. Where's your delil for that? What are you talking about? Who said that along with you? you? So if he sneezes and says, alhamdulillah, you say, alhamdulillah. If he doesn't say, alhamdulillah, what should we do? Be quiet. Don't make that dua for him. The Yahud were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then with the companions. A companion sneezed. He said, Alhamdulillah. Rasulullah said, Yarhamakullah. The Yahud started going, Hachu, Hachu. They wasn't sneezing. They wanted him to make dua for them because they knew he was the Nabi of Rahmah. They said, Hachu, Hachu. Rasulullah didn't say. He said to them, 
يَهْدِيكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيُسْلُهُ بَعْلَكُمْ May Allah guide you <laughs> and fix your situation. Get out of here, man. You think I'm dumb? Rasulullah was on top of stuff. He was on top of stuff with the enemy, with his family. One day he went to Aisha's house, or he was in her house, and he got up very quietly and gingerly. And he took his shoes, and he took his thing that he wore, and he got out the door, and he closed the door, and he went. Aisha was awake, and she, woke, she got up, put her clothes on, and she followed him. He walked, and she walked. He went inside of the graveyard, El Baqir. And she stood outside by the thing looking. She saw him raise his hands like this, and he stood there. And then he turned around to come back. She ran. She came in the house, got in the bed. Rasulullah came in, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he got in the bed. And she was doing this. <laughs> Why was she doing that? My man. Why was she doing this? My man. She was out of breath because she was running. Rasulullah said, Aisha, what are you breathing like that for? She said, nothing. Nothing. He said, if you don't tell me, Jabril's going to come and tell me. <laughs> she said, oh, Rasulullah, you got up and you went out there. I thought you was going to your other wife's house, and I just followed you. Which is a proof that that's a, I got two wives, man. <laughs> My wife does something like that. I, well, I'm going to break her neck. Why am I going to bust her up like that? Why am I going to push her down the stairs? Why am I going to call out her name? Hey, she was jealous, man. That's how it go. I thought you was going to go with your wife and it was my night and everything like that. That happens to one of us. She just girl say, you know, it's my night. Your night is all my night. It's my night. It's my, my week, my day. Can you just give me and take the crumbs? So Allah wasn't like that. He did just like this to her. Head up here. Playful. Not to hurt her. He said, I ain't shot. Do you think I would ever be unjust with you or other than you? I would never be unjust. What's the point? He knew his wife, man. Some of us, our kids will come in that room, man, drink orange juice and vodka. We don't even know. They blazed. We don't even know our kids smoking weed. We don't even know our kids got a boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm not saying you got to go behind your kid, man, and if you have to, you have to. You have to, you have to. But we got to know, man, the changes in our children, the changes of our wife, the office politics. You got to know, man, who you can trust, who you can't trust. You can't trust nobody in that office. It's being knucklehead. That's the point. That's four. Last two, if he becomes sick. Yeah, yeah. If, what time is it? If the Muslim becomes sick, you should visit him in the hospital, in his house. If visit him is hard, pick up the horn. Just reach out to him and say, Salam, how you doing? Shout out, you get that reward. Call him on the FaceTime. The technology has made things easy for us. When a person visits someone sick, visit him, the malaika walk with him until he goes and he comes back and they make dua for him. Then Allah forgives you. Yom al Qiyam, Allah will say, Oh son of Adam, I was sick and you didn't visit me. The man said, You're the Lord of the world, how you get you sick? He said, Don't you remember my slave so and so had a baby, was sick? Had you visited her, him, you would have found me there. That's the right of the Muslim. By visiting sick Muslims, we help them to convalesce. Some of us have relatives who are always sick, and we hate it, and we hate them. We look at it as a curse. When the Prophet, in fact, said, Allah will give you people money because of the weak ones from amongst you because of your children, because of your old mother, because of the invalid that you're responsible for. Is it easy? La wallah, it ain't easy. Trust me, I had a daughter who was sick like that. It ain't easy. But you're with them all the time. It's rahmah. 
So make that a part of your work repertoire, what it is to be a Muslim. Number six, the last one. Anyone, anybody want to take a shot? Put your hand up, don't scream out. Anybody want to take a shot for the last one? Go to his janazah, it's wajib. But it's farut kifaya. If some people do it, then the responsibility is lifted off of everybody else. But you should try to do it. You should try to do it. Not only that, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, who fasted today? Abu Bakr said, me. And some other people said, me. He said, who visited a sick person today? Abu Bakr said, me. And some other people said, me. But they didn't fast that day. He said, which one of you prayed the janazah today? Abu Bakr said, me. Some other people said, me. But not all of them said, the, the, all three. He said, who fed a miskeen poor person to fakir today? Abu Bakr said, me. Some other, Abu Bakr was the only one who did all four. He said, I swear by the one whose hands my soul is in. No one does these four things in a day except I guarantee he'll go to Jannah. So you heard so-and-so's janazah is tomorrow, next two days, whatever, whatever. And so on and so other person is sick. You got some money, give it to some poor people and you fast that day. His janazah is tomorrow, after tomorrow. Fast, give some sadaqah to a poor person. Go visit a sick person and the janazah. So those are the six rights from the hukuk of the Muslims and they're from the more important ones. That's why the prophet only says six, but it's more than that, it's more than that. So that is something brothers and my sisters concerning the fiqh of brotherhood in Al-Islam. You remember them chumpies, you remember them to the best of your ability. Number one, the arkan, toba, salat, zakat. Number two, the darajat, from the bottom, love for him what you love for yourself. Above that, don't hurt him. If you can't help, don't hurt. Like in the masjid. If you can't help, don't hurt. Give money, come clean it up. If you can't do that, shh, don't hurt. Don't steal stuff from the masjid. Don't break stuff in the masjid. And the highest one, at ithar And then the six uh, pillars, okay? All right, Ikhwan, you're gonna make the adhan soon, but if you guys have any questions, real quick, we knock them questions out of the ballpark, inshallah. One, two, three, if you got any questions. Uh, I'll give you a chance to ask questions before I ask you. Okay, my man. Barakallah, Fiko. Allahumma ameen. Hold on, hold on, I wanna to apologize. I wanna to apologize to my man, Abdullah, and I have to apologize because when I came early and I gave him love and everything like that, um, Della asked me where I was from, I said, Africa. And he said, something, I didn't like it really, it was sensitive. And then I said, man, I'm serious, don't do it. I was too, I was too, um, I was too, um, what's the word? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was too aggressive for that one. So I want to apologize to you, Abdullah. Because uh, you'll be surprised, Aki, sometimes our relationships and with people, they hinge on Little things like that. That brother can go away be like, man, that brother was like that with me and I didn't really mean it like that. From the rights brothers we have on each other, give your brother an excuse and the benefit of the doubt. Why did he do that? From his rights, is that we try to give a benefit of the doubt to have husn al a positive opinion. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that, Abdullah, all right? Yeah, yeah, my brother, go ahead. Uh, no, Sheikh, he said he wanted. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I said, Alhamdulillah, for your uh, presentation. One of the problems, I think, as Muslims, is when we invite someone who has more knowledge more than us, we tend not to deal with a term I call social Islam. You know, you hear the same thing 50 times from the same people, are different people. But social Islam. No emphasis is being placed on social Islam. Or we interrelate what are my duties to you and yours to me and how we should function as a community. This is ignored. So I call it social Islam, alhamdulillah, for making this presentation and this aspect of how our relationship is. My mother, may Allah guide her and bless her, she used to say a lot of wise things, man. She was not a Muslim, but she was a wise, and she is a wise lady. 
She used to tell my sisters, my two sisters, my brother and myself, when she wanted us to do something, she would use an acronym and it was KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. And that to my mother and her turtle of teaching us means keep it simple, stupid. That's what my mother used to say, keep it simple, stupid. And she didn't call me a stupid like in a condescending way, but she was trying to emphasize. And that's an Islamic principle. Our dawah, our teachings should be basic for our community. It shouldn't be up there with the stars, man. A jarh, what the ideal is difficult. A sulu fiqh is difficult. The qiraat of the Quran is difficult. Let's just keep it simple amongst ourselves. Treat each other the way you want to be treated. Leave this whole talk on the side. Leave the whole thing on the side. Everything on the side. Just treat everybody the way you want to be treated. That's all. Simple as that. Let that be a daily goal. I don't want to have a double standard. And I don't want to oppress people because I don't want that to happen to me. And there's a principle in life, come out to deen to dine. As you do, it's going to be done unto you. So you younger brothers, you be knuckleheads, be disrespectful, you be mean to your mother and your father, your turn is going to come around when you get married. And you're gonna have kids who are gonna do the same thing to you. You took a man's wife, you took a man's daughter, and you don't treat her well, you're gonna have a daughter. You're gonna have a daughter. And then there's gonna be some knucklehead who's gonna come and treat her the same way. The same way. So it's simple, man, kiss. You guys remember that acronym. Keep it simple, stupid. Any more questions? And don't, I ain't calling nobody stupid, man. I'm sharing. <laughs> now, some of them mean mugging me, man. Some of them mean mugging me, man. Don't mean mug me, man. Any more questions, man? Zab, you have? Yeah, my brother. In terms of the, are there any classical books on brotherhood that you can recommend? Um, I know Imam Hazani has one. Yeah, in English, in English right now, there was a renaissance in the last 15, 20 years where brothers on the Sunnah who want pure Islam did a lot of translating books and things like that. And there are a lot of books on brotherhood out there that were translated by different brothers. So if you put in Google, brotherhood according to the Quran and the Sunnah, that stuff would come up. And I have to say this, brother, May Allah bless you. I'm a straight up cat. And Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, I wouldn't advise the community to read his book, Ihya al-Lum al because it has a lot of Sufism in it and stuff like that. What I just told you is from that book. What I just told you is from that book. Now, as you sat there and you listened to what you just heard, now, of course, I put my own shatta and my own milh on it, right? But the origin of, he's a Sufi. Are we going to say, oh, well, everything you just said is disqualified. Let's throw it away. Let's throw it away. Because it's in a Sufi book. Do, do, is that Islam right there? Because some people will have you to believe that's Islam. And would have you stuck on stupid, scratching your head. Should we throw that book away? Or this information? So we have to learn how, brother, as the teacher to put it across, as the students to understand, our religion is not complicated like that, man. Prophet Muhammad described this ummah and he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ummatuna, ummatun, ummiya, la naqra. We are an umma, a group of people who are illiterate. We don't read and we don't count very well. It's a miracle. Imam al Bayhaqi brought that book in his book, Kitab Dala'il al Nabuwa. How did he know that if you took all of the Muslims at any given time, you gathered them all up, more of them can't read and write 
then they can. The hadith is not encouraging us to be illiterate, but it's telling the reality of our ummah. So do you think an ummah that's illiterate, the Quran will be complicated? The religion is complicated? Nah, this is a religion that Amr, Bakr, and Zayn can follow easily. Whereas when you pick up that Bible, the language. God so forth loveth it went over there. How far art thou, Romeo, Juliet? Like, man, get out of here with that stuff. We can't even read that stuff. It, it doesn't even make sense, man. But you look at the Quran and it said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad. The ayah said, Muhammad Rasulullah, Walladina Ma'u Shidda wal Kufar, Ruhama Bainahum. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and those who are with him, they are harsh, rough, strong against Kufar. Rahma, Ruhama, between us. Is that difficult to understand? Hold on all together to the rope of Allah and don't be divided. Is that difficult to understand? I listen to some of these Christians, man. And I'd be like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And that's why you find a lot of African-American men don't accept Christianity because the preacher is just appealing to the emotions of my mother and my aunts and stuff like that. They're not trying to appeal to the intellect of the Rijal. That doesn't mean that you put women down. No, I'm not doing that. But Allah created men in a way we're supposed to be uqala. Don't talk to my emotions. Talk to them sometimes, but let me hear what you got to say, the real stuff. So may Allah bless you, man, for that observation. My brother, this is the last question, fellas. I'm set up. Five and six of the brother, you know, you need to put this in brother. It's one of the hardest things that Muslim practice with, especially in this country. When a Muslim is sick, if you're not close friend, then you be like work is Janaza. We have had Janaza in Jamaica with four or five people in the great community. Four or five? And it is sad if the person that are prominent, nobody goes. A few go. But if it's a person of prominence, it is. That people control ear and face, so you control crowd. And it's that for you, you cannot overemphasize these areas. Yeah, I can imagine. And that's one of the challenges of being in this environment that you guys have to come close to one another in the true brotherhood because you only have Allah and then you have one another. So I can see that this is the situation because of the weakness of Islam here. Alladheena qala lahum, what's the ayat again? Um, the malaika, dhari min anfusim, qalu, fi ma kuntum, qalu, kunna mustadafeen fi al-ard, qalu, lam takun ardu Allahi wa asiyatam fadu hajiru fiha. Those people who, the malaika will come to them when they're dead, and the malaika will say, what was your state in the earth? They will say, kunna mustadafin. We were weak and oppressed in the earth. We were in Jamaica. We didn't have anything. The malaika will say, wasn't Allah's earth spacious that you could have left where you were weak and gotten to a place where you could price Islam? So that's not an excuse. While we're weak and oppressed, we may not be able to go anywhere. So let's do the next best thing. Come together, man. Come together. Because if Allah is with you, nobody can harm you. Nobody can harm you. So I can see how that is a problem. In the UK, you don't have that problem. You go to the janazah, announcement is made, you get a lot of people at your janazah, man. If you are nobody, not a nobody, everybody's somebody, but you could be a revert with no family because reverts who are homeless, accepted Islam, they die. They get six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand people at the janazah. And Prophet Muhammad said, if a person dies, 40 people, 4-0, four make his janazah, they'll give him intercession. Another hadith said 100. You think that's a low number? 40 people with tawheed, it's hard to find. Real tawheed, only fear Allah, nobody else. That's tawheed. 
know that his risk is only coming from Allah. He knows Allah's names and attributes. He doesn't do things so to please people. He'll take positions to please Allah for or against. Not gonna take a position because everybody else is saying it and you don't wanna get in trouble and they're putting pressure on me. It's a compromising show, so he. Our children, uh, popular culture right now, right now, popular culture right now, Halloween, Valentine's. Muslim giving his wife chocolate for Valentine's, say, be my Valentine. Muslims get married and exchange rings. You can give your wife a ring as a gift. You can give your wife a ring as the dowry. You can do that. But this exchange of rings is not from our religion. That's from Christianity. They believe you put it on this finger of the man, that finger of the lady, they'll always be in love. Right now, Muslim kids believe in Cupid. The way they believe in Iblis, Iblis got a long tail that's red with ears and he pitchfork over the Jahannam. Iblis is in Jahannam. He's in Jahannam. No, he's one of the fallen angels. On the airplane coming over here, there was a movie, Exorcist. The Pope's Exorcist. That's a new flick out. The Pope's Exorcist. And they were saying in the thing that there were 200 angels, fallen angels, and they all occupy a place in the earth that God is not welcome in that part of the earth. And I'm sitting here watching that movie. You can't even watch that stuff. It's not even permissible to watch. وَقَدْ نَزَّلْ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنَّهُ it's been revealed to you in Muhammad that if you hear Allah's ayahs being disbelieved and ridiculed, don't sit with the people while they do that. If you sit with them, you will like them. The Muslims do the Eid and uh, Hindus come. All kind of stuff that we take for granted, especially with our kids. Parents send their kids to Catholic school. They have Catholic school in? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. So every day the Muslim girl, she has to say, Hell, Mary, full of grace, blessed is thee amongst the women. And she could do that every day, every day, every day, every day. The parents, the parents. Professional, doctor, doctor, white brother, a white boy, white man, Catholic, Catholic, gonna let their daughter marry the Catholic. And on the day of the nikah, let them take the shahada. On the day of the nikah, then you should have, you, you should have checked that, man, come on now. So it's a lot of stuff out there, guys, and I don't want to be like negative because Allah doesn't burden us with what we can't deal with. We can deal with all of this. But let's do what's manageable, man. Like, be brothers, man. Brothers and sisters. Simple as that. You sit in that audience, someone gives a talk, you don't like it for whatever reason. Hi, right, you go to the person. I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like it because this, 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 this. And we talk about it. And it's, it, as opposed to walking away, harboring in your heart and your mind. But inshallah, guys, you guys going to be all right. Inshallah, you're going to be OK. Hopefully, before concluding, I just wanted to let you know. I spoke to the Sheikh Musa at Tijani. May Allah bless him. And I had told him when I spoke to him, Sheikh, I'm going to come back and live in Jamaica. I'm going to live in your veranda right here. <laughs> He said, all right. <laughs> he was generous. He said, I, I. So I just got to find me a bed and stuff like that. And a dula. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika wa shadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa tuwakalik. Wassalamu alaikum.